All right, my little art friends, I know you maybe you don't have any crayons at home, but you still want to art. This week, I'm going to show you four apps that you can use on your computer. You don't even have to have a pencil. So first up, I'm going to jump right in, Sumo Paint 2.0. I've just started using this myself, I'm just trying to get the hang of it, but it's pretty basic, um, which is a good way to start if you've never used any digital online photo application stuff before. So, uh, to start with, you've just got your toolbar over here, and you can just click on each one of these and try it and find out what it is, and you got a layers palette over here, which is nice because you can make more than one layer. Let me just show you a few of its, few of its features, I'll make a little picture for you. Uh, this first one right here is the gradient tool, and you can select different types of gradients, like the way it lays out, and the color, so I'm going to select that one. Um, and I'm just going to click here and I'm going to drag and I'm going to make a gradient. Ooh, pretty nice, right? Now, I always go back to the selection tool after I start something so I don't click on something by accident. It's just good practice right there. So then I was playing around and I looked at the filters and I noticed it had some noise. And I'm like, yeah, I want to add some noise to my picture. So I just click on the little, ooh, that's a lot of noise. So I'm just going to bring that noise down just a little bit till I get a lot of noise how much I like it. I hit OK. I'm like, cool, I like this little background thing. Let's put a foreground on it. Okay, this right here is your selection tool. You can make a square, but you can make a circle. I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to click down about right here. I'm going to drag it out and try to get it circular. And now it's everything that's going to happen is only going to happen inside that circle. So I'm going to grab another gradient, and then you're going to see where I'm going with this. I'm going to use this circle gradient. That's this one right here. And I'm going to click a different color. This one looks pretty, right? And then I'm going to click over here on my picture. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and I'm going to drag till it fills up that selection. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Now you see where I'm going with it? I'm making a cool space picture. Yeah. All right, let's make a new layer. If I click over here on the plus, it makes a new layer. So things that are on this layer are going to stay on that layer and things that are on this layer are going to stay on this layer. So I'm going to put something on this layer. I also saw up in the filters uh, under noise, there were clouds. So just for fun, I'm going to throw some clouds on top of that. Boom. Oh, that's kind of fun, except for I can't see my space picture anymore. That's ridiculous. Well, I could turn it off because I can turn off my layer. At least I didn't ruin my bottom layer. It's still there. I'm going to turn it back on. But what if I just reduce the opacity? Click over here, drag that down, maybe like 40%, maybe less. Now I can see it underneath there. Oh, that's a cool looking space picture you got there. Okay, check it out. Sumo Paint 2.0. Lots of fun. It does cool stuff. It does other cool stuff and uh, try it and if you like it uh, make some art all right application number two this is uh, Pixlr's photo editor Pixlr E uh, actually this is new and it's new to me but it looks really good uh, it's got a lot of the same features as um, Sumo Paint does with its tool set over here and it's, um, it's got layers over here um, it's also got history and a navigator and it's got a lot more filters and it also has adjustments, which are kind of cool. Like if you're used to Photoshop, the threshold adjustment, for example, where you can make a stencil by making it black and white. I'm just going to use my Taylor Swift here to give you an example. I'm not going to save that. Um, and it's got all the same tools with the paint tools, but it's got a couple of extra tools that are very much like Photoshop. For example, the liquify tool. Um, it has different like push on liquify. Like I don't feel like her cheeks are big enough, so I'm just going to um, make her cheeks a little bigger. Um, actually, if you make you can make the brush size bigger on that too, um, and then I can really make her cheeks bigger. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, big cheek, Taylor Swift. Um, and it's also got the the Bigify tool, which um, if I wanted her eyes bigger, I can just click in her eyes and make her eyes bigger. Now she looks like a Snapchat filter. So you can play around the Liquify tool. A lot of other things you can do here. Um, it's also got the Clone Stamp tool like Photoshop does. If I click on her eye, for example, I just click on it and then um, I can draw that part. Like I feel like she needs another eye, like in her mouth or maybe in her forehead. There you go. So that's kind of fun. So there's a lot of tools you can you can use here. Um, and again, the adjustments are very similar to Photoshop. Uh, brightness contrast or use saturation, which a lot of you that have used Photoshop before are familiar with. So if I want to make Taylor Swift a little bit more colorful, I can change her U and bump up her saturation. That looks nice. So uh, same thing as before, I can add uh, more layers um, and I can actually add image layers, which is really nice. So now I can work on top of that with some of these other tools, um, the blur tool, Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Got to work on this one. Um, you can blur things. You can sharpen it. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. So go into Pixlr. Try the new Pixlr R. This is a great app, and you can have a lot of fun photo manipulating and just uh, going crazy. 
All right, try that one out. Okay, our third app is called Gravit Designer, and this is actually um, based on Adobe Illustrator, and so um, it's a little bit different than maybe what you're used to. Um, I did have to make an account, or at least I did make an account. I don't know if I had to or not, um, but I did, and it gave me like the pro version. So I don't know what happens when the pro version runs out. We'll find out. I've got 11 days left here. All right, it's a little different. First of all, it uses, um, it does, it's not pixel based like the other programs. It doesn't use little square dots. It actually uses mathematics to make the shapes and stuff that's in it. But don't worry, you don't have to do the math. The app does it for you, so it's cool. Um, and it's also backwards. The layers are on the left, and all your selection and stuff is on the right so I'm just going to show you a few things on here uh, for example uh, just making basic shapes like you could take a star and you can click in here and you can uh, make your star you can make it bigger you can make it smaller and when you let go of the mouse it makes the star now I've got my selection tool there I can move it where I wanted to and you can use these regular things like rotate and size it by grabbing the ends like you would any program so once you've got your shape you've got all your things you can do to it over here for example you've got your fill color so you can click on it and you can change the color so right there it's red uh, and not only can you change the color but you can change the um, border which is the space around it so uh, if I click here boop um, you'll see it says one point border it's a black outline around it and you can make that bigger you know you can go up make a couple points however you want or you can make it oh, really fat. Okay, you get the idea. I'm going to go back to like a little border. Um, and also, uh, when you click your fill, you don't have to just choose color where it says color fill here, but your gradients are there as well. So you can choose, let's say, a radial gradient, and you can decide the colors you want it to be. Um, I can make it beautiful radial gradient, and nobody likes it to be black. So I'm going to make it red on one side, and I'm going to make it... Um, like yellow on the other side because it's beautiful so if I don't know how to do that apparently there we go oh that's much better actually it's kind of green oh look that's pretty too oh I messed it all up come back this online stuff is harder than it looks okay there you go beautiful great you get the idea and you can adjust the gradient by using these tools here now that was fun not only can you change the colors but you can change the shape itself for the appearance for example, I have five points, but I can just bump that up and I can have more points. I could have like a million points. Look at all those points. And not just that, but I can change the size of the points. I can make it really, really spiky. I can make it rounder. I can have all this fun with it. So I think I made a sunflower. Look how beautiful that is. So there you go, a little sunflower. Beautiful. Now, the next thing you need to know about is the pen tool, which you use with a path. And this is a tricky little tool. Um, what it does is when you click on it, it makes a point, and then if you drag, it'll follow that point to make the line. And if you click and you hold down the mouse, by dragging it out, you can make the points round, or you could have just left it straight if it was down in the middle. So if you wanted to make a shape, a weirdo shape, you just keep going like that, and when you get back to the end there, uh, it connects, and then you've got your shape. And of course, you can fill that just like any other shape. So... Um, Let's go with green. Now look, I made a beautiful leaf. <laughs> it looks like a leaf. Okay, right there. And what else can you do with this fun tool? Uh, you can add effects. Sure, it's got some effects. Not as much as the other tools do, but it's got a, it's got a drop, shot, drop shadow. It's got inner shadow. Inner shadow might be fun. You can see it doesn't have a shadow yet because the uh, X and Y coordinates here, remember this is math, are zero. But if you just bump that up a little bit, you can see here, the shadow starting to come in so you can have a little fun with that and you can change the X and the Y however you want to play around with it so now it really looks like a leaf and of course you can copy and paste by just selecting on it and control C control V and now I've got a look at that a beautiful and you can flip that somehow transform flip vertical yeah wow that was beautiful and now I made two leaves for my plant feeling pretty good about that and you can see if I kept going, I could have a whole little thing there. Now, these are all separated. If I wanted them to be together, I can select them all by just drawing a box around them with my selection tool. Now, they're all selected. And you can group these. Let's see. I know you can. There you go. Group selection. And now, it's one big whole selection. 
Well, the last app I want to show you is actually a game. Yes, Mr. Sands is going to let you play games in class today. How cool is that? Well, I told you that the pen tool in Gravits could kind of be a bear to learn and definitely in Adobe Illustrator. So uh, it, it's a hard tool to learn, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really powerful tool. So this game is designed to show you how to use the pen tool. Actually, it doesn't show you how. You kind of have to figure it out. But uh, so you get yourself a little pen tool and you just click in here it comes with a pen tool you just got to put it over the spot and you're just going to draw what they what they ask you to draw so i'm going to click here and i'm going to draw my line to this dot and i'm going to draw my line to that dot and uh and i'm done now there are some things to it you're, you have to do it in a, a certain amount of stops so uh you know you can't have 15 clicks i guess what i'm saying so i click once i got four nodes remaining i click twice I click three times. I think I'm gonna have five when I'm done. Two nodes remaining. I guess for zero nodes. Let's find out what that means. Zero nodes. What's a node? I'm gonna click the zero nodes remaining, but I still have to click. I guess I'm going back to the beginning. It's the same one. Wow, I made it. Now you can tell each one of these gets a little bit more complicated. So this, they show you how to do it at first, which is nice. This is what I was talking about. If you saw the gravits part of the video, where I was like, you gotta click, and then when you go there, if I just click here it's going to make a straight line. See, that doesn't work. But if I click and I hold down and I pull it out, it's going to make that curve. So it's actually giving me in this circle how far out I have to, to pull it to get it right. Um, oops. Oh, look how good I am at this. I guess if you don't do, oh my gosh, it's really hard. So anyway, I'm not going to play this game anymore because I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> Uh, well, but you can give it a try and see if you can get it to work. So that's the last game. I hope you have fun. Try out these apps. If you do, post it to, if you're, if you're an art one, post it to Seesaw. If you're in the other classes, post it to Satori. And let's see what you're doing. All right. Stay safe.